Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of my 2022 holiday series. So today we're actually going to be merging it together with my mini album basics series. So we're going to be creating a um, window, an acetate window mini album um, cover today. So this is going to be the mini album basics on how to create a window <coughs> album. But then next week for the last video um, in our series, we are actually going to be combining this base with these pages that I made a few weeks back in the mini album basics series where we did waterfalls. So we'll be putting these pages into this book. But next week we will do the backs of these and finish um, decorating this book. So let's get to it. All right, guys, let's get started with this. So I have my piece of medium weight chipboard here and it measures eight by eight. And then what I've done is from all of my edges, I've marked in an inch. So I marked in with my ruler an inch here and I made a little tick mark. And then I marked in an inch from this side. Then I flipped it, marked in an inch, marked in an inch, marked in an inch and an inch, and then an inch and an inch. Then I took my ruler and um, a pencil and I simply connected those tick marks on both sides and made a line, okay? So that gives me an inch border all the way around my chipboard. So now what I need to do is cut this section out. So I have a metal ruler here and I have a surface that I can cut on and I have my craft knife, okay? I prefer these big craft knives like this you can get from the hardware store because for me, they just um, they just cut faster and better for what I use them for. So just line your ruler up with your pencil mark and cut just in that center section. And you should be able to feel when it cuts through. So this one is cut through. So if it's not, you can kind of place your blade in there and just make sure that it is all the way. So this is cut through. So now I'm just gonna go all the way around and cut the rest of it out. All right, so now it is cut out. So if you do have any pieces like this, make sure you cut those away because they'll get in the way when we're wrapping it. All right, so that is our center piece cut out. So I'm gonna put my cutting mat aside here and I'm gonna grab a piece of my cardstock that's 10 by 10. And I'm going to glue my chipboard onto my black cardstock that's 10 by 10. Um, it is 65 pound cardstock. I don't ever recommend wrapping it with anything heavier than that. I'm using my beacon glue here just because it doesn't warp and it gives me a second to move my chipboard around so that I can get it nice and centered. Let's get that glue on there. Nice even amount. And then just put it right in the center of your chipboard, just like this. Or sorry, in the center of your cardstock. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring my cutting mat 
back in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up my ruler from corner to corner here. So I'm gonna angle it a little bit so it's easier for me to see. So angle it a little bit and I'm gonna line it up in this corner, in this corner. And I'm gonna take my craft knife and I'm gonna cut right along there. Make sure you get all the way to the corner when you're cutting. So right into that corner. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So line it up in the corners. And cut across. All right, so you should have three flaps just like this, okay? Now what we need to do is we need to actually cut off a little bit of these. So I'm gonna do about a ruler's width right here and I'm just gonna cut some of that off. So these should be good now. That's perfect. So now let's go ahead and fold them all back. And I like to get right in there along the chipboard and burnish it back. So just fold it back first, then get right along that chipboard and burnish it back all the way around. Just like this. All right, so now I've got my art glitter glue here. I like to just put it in a smaller bottle and I'm gonna start by putting it right along the spine or the, the chipboard because that softens the cardstock so that it kind of molds a lot nicer over top of the chipboard. And I like to put it down with my fingers first, kind of spread that glue out and then do with the bone folder, burnish that. And then also burnish your edge of your chipboard here. So it's the same thing all the way around. Put it along the cardstock first, along the chipboard, then all over that flap. Then just bring this over and burnish it. And then burnish that edge. Then we do along the chipboard, all over the flap. Bring it down with your fingers first. And again, you could definitely do this with tape if you would like, but I find the glue holds really well and it's nice and quick. So again, along the chipboard and on the flap. it over, fingers first, and then burnish with your bone folder. All right, so you see how we have that nice, neat frame on the front, okay? So now we need to go ahead and fold the rest of the cardstock over top of the chipboard. So I like to just slowly bring it down with my fingers, then burnish it and make sure there's no room between your chipboard 
and where your cardstock folds over. Make sure it's really nice and snug up against it. So all the way around, it's the same thing. You can even use your chipboard and your table and press it down like that. That's also a good option. I kind of go between the two methods. All right, so now we've got this. So now we need to cut across our corners. So you're gonna cut about an eighth of an inch away from your chipboard. All right, so about that much so that when it folds over, it fully covers your chipboard, okay? So all the way around, cut out those corners. Just like that. So now you should have this going on. So now again, we're gonna go right along the chipboard with our glue and all over the flap. Bring it over with your fingers first. I like to go from the middle and kind of smooth out towards the edges and then burnish it and then burnish your edge and then you get that nice square edge. And then I like to go to the opposite side Fold it over, go with your fingers first, then with the bone folder, and burnish that edge, then over here, fingers first. Then go with the bone folder, then burnish that edge. And then the final one here. Bring it down, fingers first. Then burnish, and then that edge. All right. So there's our beautifully wrapped frame. So the biggest tip that I can give you before you move on to any other steps, create your frame that's going to cover the back here. Because if you don't, then it's going to be very, very difficult to measure it and to get it exactly enough to cover this. I've learned from experience, so <laughs> believe me, it's true. So what I like to do is I've got a piece of my cardstock here that's seven and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. So it's just an eighth of an inch smaller than my frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the back here, just like this, and I'm gonna grab some tape. And I like to kind of fuzz the tape on my clothes just so it doesn't stick too much. And I'm gonna put it on my frame leaving just a slight border all the way around. Then I'm going to put a piece of tape here. And I'm going to put a piece of tape at the bottom. Don't press too hard on the tape. It's just to kind of put it in place. Then you're going to turn it over to the front the front of your frame and I'm going to use a pencil and I'm going to draw that frame out just like this okay then we'll remove our tape this is just a washi tape if I didn't say all right and then we have the frame ready so now we need to cut this out so I'm gonna bring back in my cutting mats and my cutting knife and my metal ruler. 
and we're just going to cut this out. So all of my little, the pieces are, it's cut out. So now when I go, not, we're not going to do this yet, but when I go to mat this, it is going to fully cover the entire back so that we have none of this to worry about. Okay. So this piece we put aside for now, the frame piece, and then we're going to go ahead and wrap the other piece of chipboard that's going to go on the back and so again it's a piece of 8 by 8 chipboard and our cardstock measures 10 by 10 and I'm going to wrap this exactly the same way I did at the front obviously just without um, cutting the aperture out. got that all wrapped since it's gonna get put aside for now now we need to wrap our spine piece so our spine piece measures two by eight and then I've got some of my lightweight cardstock here so it's my 65 pound cardstock that measures 10 by 4 so 4 inches by 10 and we're just gonna go ahead and glue our chipboard to the center of the cardstock there just right to the center just like that and now what we need to do is we need to bring the short sides over the chipboard so just like this and you can burnish that and then what I like to do is I actually like to kind of let my bone folder drop off the side and pre-burnish right along my spine piece. So I am doing the easy wrap um, album method for this book. All right, then you take your glue, you put your glue along your chipboard, all over these flaps. The flap, I should say, and then a little bit, about a three quarters of an inch along that chipboard there. And then when you put it down, because we pre-burnished, 
the paper already knows exactly where it's going, but just give it a nice burnish along that chipboard. And then the same thing on this side, so fold it over the chipboard. Burnish it. Burnish right along your chipboard here. So just kind of let it drop off the side. And the burnish. Then add your glue. Right along the chipboard, about three quarters of an inch down the side. Fold it over. And like I said, it already knows where to go. Because we pre-burnished it. All right, so next. So next, let's go ahead and fold, kind of just press down our chipboard over those flaps on both sides. Just like that. All right, so just make sure they're burnished really well. Then what we need to do is grab our scissors and kind of from where that dip is beside the chipboard down to where the, it's folded over, we need to cut at an angle, just like this, okay? So you're gonna do that all on all both sides. All right, so that's what your piece should look like, okay? So now we're gonna bring back in the back of our book and the front of our book, okay? So we're gonna connect these two with our spine piece. So I always like to lay it down and burnish it again, just to make it really, really nice and flat and easy to work with. I'm gonna put my glue all over this, get to every corner of it, because this is what's holding your book together. All right, then just lay it right along the spine here, or right along the page, I should say, the front cover. Then you can pick it up and you wanna make sure that they are even to each other across the top here. Don't worry if any glue comes out or anything like that. It's gonna dry clear. Burnish it before you lift it up, then kind of slowly lift it and give it a burnish from the inside as well. All right, and then same thing with this one. So I'm gonna fold this down, give it a nice burnish from the top, make it nice and flat, add your glue. We get a lot of nice glue on there. Lay it right along this piece. Pick it up, make sure that they're even to each other here. That's what you want. Give it a burnish. Just like this. All right. And then you can pick it up, open it, and burnish it again. All right, and then that is the basic construction of the um, album. All right, so the next thing we need to do before we add our acetate is just do our little construction strips to hide the chipboard here on our spine. So I have two pieces of 65 pound cardstock that measure one by eight and i'm i scored them both at half an inch so just right in the middle and now we're just going to go ahead and fold and burnish these just like this so just fold and burnish them in half for both of them the 
just try to be as even as you can. All right, now what we need to do is grab a scissors and from the score line, we need to miter in. So don't go into the score line at all, just at the very edge of the score line, we do a miter. And we'll do that for both of them, just like this. All right, so now go ahead and add glue to one of your sections here, one of your little half inch sections. And what I like to do is I like to lay it down right along the spine. So it should be the same height of your book. Lay it down right along the spine, give it a burnish. And then put your glue on the other flap. And then just fold that over. your chipboard and then give it all a nice burnish and then you can kind of lift your book and burnish just with the thick part of your bone folder in there and then we'll do the same thing on the other side here so just add your glue to one section first Get a good amount of glue on there. Lay it down right along your uh, chipboard, along your spine. And give it a burnish. Then add your glue to this flap. Fold it over top of your chipboard. Smooth it out with your fingers first. Again, don't worry if any glue comes out, it'll dry clear. Give that all a burnish. And then lift with your book. All right, and that's, that, that's our spine nicely finished. And it also goes a long way towards just really strengthening up our book. All right, so now we can go ahead and add our acetate. So the acetate measures seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters. And I've already gone ahead and attached some score tape around the edge. I do not like using um, wet glue when I'm attaching acetate. If I can avoid it at all, I don't. Um, so I did attach some score tape. So now just go ahead and remove the backing. I'm just gonna remove the backing of one so I can get it nice and centered in here. Just leave yourself a nice border all the way around. Then we can go ahead and remove the rest of the backings. If it doesn't come up with the tape. like that and then just let it kind of come down flat all right just like this all right now we will add our frame and I am gonna have to use wet glue to attach it because it has to be really really exact to where it goes down and that's harder to do with uh, tape. So I'm just gonna be very, very careful as I'm putting it down, not to get it on my acetate. But I am using my um, beacon glue because it gives me the most movement time. All right, so just be very, very careful as you're putting it down so you don't have to move it very much when you put it down so you see how that beautifully covers everything and finishes the inside the trick to when you you know make that frame before you put the acetate on it is a very important step because 
Otherwise, it is quite difficult to get that frame right where you need it to be. Like, it just, this is much easier, let's just say that. All right, now we just have two steps to completely finish this um, album. So to cover the back inside cover, I have a piece of my lightweight black cardstock here that measures seven and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. So the same size as our frame was. And you realistically don't need to do this. You can just add pattern paper to finish it. But I kind of want this to be a completely finished base for the sake of the mini album basics series. So get that all over there. And then for the spine, we have a piece that measures one and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. Still just the lightweight cardstock. And that's just gonna finish it completely on the inside cover everything up nicely. All right, and then that completely finishes the mini album basics video on how to create an acetate window mini album. So next week, we are going to be using um, our pages that we created from the um, mini album basics episode that was all about different types of waterfalls. So we're gonna be using these pages um, and we'll be finishing this album together next week for the last um, the last video in our uh, holiday 2022 series. All right, guys, I'll see you uh, next time. Bye-bye.